I'll see if this microphone will work this time and stay with me. Uh, welcome to this session on its uh, presenting out of Texas A&M. It's cutting in and out. Uh, we'll have to get a replacement here this afternoon. Uh, Chris also presentation Texas today, so he's not here. But anyway, so Courtney is uh, taking the full load of the of the presentation, so I'll turn it over to Courtney. to reach audiences. So I'll try to go through this as fast and furious as possible. But if we had time, we could probably play a game of bingo with all these social media options that are out there that I probably know about what five of these are, to be completely honest with you. So a lot more. There's a lot of different options that we have out there to interact with our audiences via social media. And so, um, but in one of the earlier sessions I was at today, you know, when they said Facebook is probably the easiest way to get integrated um, into social media, the easiest and the fastest way. And so what we tried to do is take it one step further. So you probably are all on Twitter, yes, no? Everybody's pretty familiar with Twitter, so I don't have to go over these definitions, because we're going to give this a little try. If y'all want to tweet this morning, you can during this really quick session. But so you know what Twitter is, I'm going to talk about TweetUps, which is a planned online conversation on Twitter and how to use the hashtag. And so if you want to give it a try, you can. I did tweet this earlier. You can search for the hashtag that I chose to use, NEXConvo. So if you think, if you want to answer a question as how a TweetUp would work in your state, you can do that, use that hashtag. I'm going to talk more about the TweetUp, so I'm going to have a few more of these for you to take a look at or to um, tweet later if you want to. And so some examples might be if we were practicing, if we had a little bit more time, a tweet up would work for 4-H. You could say it would work great during an online training for small landowners or maybe it would be helpful in identifying issues in our community. That's maybe some ways you could use a tweet up in your state. So that's kind of how the process works. But I, there are circled there the hashtag, which is important so you can follow the, your conversation and what people are posting. So social media, to give a little bit of background, which I'm, you know, I'm not going to claim to be an expert. There are far many more experts here than me today, but we don't have a choice on whether we actually use it. It's how well we use it, basically. And so um, where things currently stand is that we know that our brands and we have to be active on social media. People are spending a lot of time on there. Twitter is surpassing Facebook and um, are looking to Twitter um, for marketing. And um, some platforms don't work for some, while others work best you know, for other organizations. And so if you want more about that, the reference is on their Business Insider. And two, we have tried to take the stance that I know when I started an extension many years ago, there were all these three ring binders on the shelves in the office that I you know, took over. And Extension programs are not in that three ring binder anymore somewhere, you know, in your office. Yes, some of them might still be there, but trying to think beyond that three wing, ring binder is important. And so a little bit more about social media is that we know that on Facebook, they have millions of unique visitors every month, how much time they're spending, they're using mobile devices, and um, an average of 229 friends is what a person has on Facebook. And then as well as Twitter, which I said is, has surpassed Facebook. But um, even some just the high points on here is that 40% you know, of Twitter users don't even tweet anything. But that doesn't mean they're not looking to see what we are tweeting for our extension programs. And so 25% um, of Twitter users have no followers. I don't have many. But um, you know, it's important. Hopefully our organizations and um, programs have followers on there. So the next question, if you want to tweet, is what type of audience would a tweet up work with? Just to get some ideas from you, or you could um, share ideas on Twitter if you want to do that. If you don't want to do it now, you can do it later. But a little bit about what we've done. We started with Facebook, obviously. We use things like Constant Contact to send out emails to our 35,000 4-H families, um, do videos on YouTube. 
and you know we have a Pinterest and stuff like that. So it all started with Facebook, but then we you know went into Twitter and came up with tweet ups and what we call Leadership Live, and I'll talk about both of those. So what we did with a tweet up is we found a topic. Our first one was just general 4-H information, like you know where can you find these resources? What do you want to do in 4-H? You can invite guest experts to be a part of the tweet up and obviously promote it through social media, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, email, using constant contact, whatever you use. But it's important what we did for our tweet ups. Has anybody done a tweet up, I guess I should say, or anything like it? OK, I have one hand. Um, is established an actual timeline and a script for our tweet. So it was very somewhat structured on our end, but you never know what the structure is going to uh, multiply into when you get everybody else involved. And then we had to determine our tag, like I did for today, but we used Texas 4-H Convo for our tag. So what we encouraged everyone to use that hashtag um, so that we could follow the conversation better. Obviously, you have to check for internet capabilities. We've done these tweet ups. We've done quite a, quite a few of them over the past year and a half. And you always have to have a backup plan. You can see here, this is Chris Bowman's um, ferret, one of his ferrets that he has at home. And he's got an iPad going and a computer going. And then also usually a cell phone. And we're all texting back and forth as we're operating this. So having a backup plan of multiple devices as well as a backup plan of multiple people is very important. Because you can max out the number of tweets that you post, with, you know, t the number of tweets that you do within a certain amount of time. And he's done that. So then it's t you know, texting all of us saying, tweet this, tweet that. So it really does take more than one person um, to, uh, to do that. So to give you a little example, let me go on to this, a little example about what it looks like. There's a lot of words on here. But this is kind of a script of what our very first tweet up looked like a couple of years ago where you know, we, we spelled it out, what we were going to tweet, um, you know, recognizing people that were joining us, asking the question, what makes 4-H great? And what is your four, favorite 4-H project? What is one thing you would like to see the Texas 4-H program do? So we knew at what times we would be asking those questions and then getting feedback from everybody that was participating. And once again, we followed it with the hashtag of TX4HConvo. And so we've done other ones besides just this general 4-H one. We've done one focused on 4-H livestock projects, which through our promotions, you know, all of a sudden at 725, our commissioner of agriculture hops on and starts talking to our 4-H members. Um, and we've also done one on, this is another example um, that we've done on food and nutrition, where we had guest experts, nutrition specialists, registered dietitians um, join us. And, university representatives join us. And so we actually gave out a little bit more um, educational information during this tweet up. And so when you choose a specific topic, um, it allows you to actually give out the education. But it also does allow you to gain feedback from your audience as well. So like I said, I know that's a lot of words and a lot of information there. But that's just an example of what, how we scripted the tweet up. We recently um, hosted one just a couple of months ago as well that was youth-led. So we had some of our State 4-H leadership team and technology team members host one on how to put together 4-H presentations, public presentations. And so they actually formatted the event, decided what information was important for youth to know when they're working on their public speaking skills. So it was a different way to get information out to our audiences. And so though you are familiar with um, Twitter. This is the information on it and how we search then. We keep in our, our search queue up there, TX4H Convo, and we're able to follow the conversation the best we can. Obviously, having two screens is, um, makes it a lot easier to keep up with um, tweets and retweets and all that kind of stuff. So you've got to be careful to also you know, make sure, and since I'm a novice, this. Click on all and not just look at your top tweets. You want to see all of them so you can respond and retweet and favorite things. And so what we saw with our very first tweet up was that we were able to share information. We were able to get feedback. We were able to remind them of upcoming events, give them reminders, and get ideas. Beyond that, then, we were able to start giving out educational information through those tweet ups 
like some of those specified topics like public speaking and foods and nutrition and youth livestock. And if you look at all the followers that people have and all the tweets and the retweets that we have with our first one, um, that spanned out to about 55,000 people that it reached on Twitter. So then we took it one step further, and Chris Bowman loves TED Talks. Um, some of you might be very familiar with those. And a few years back, we discovered Chick-fil-A LeaderCast, which I don't know if anybody's ever participated in that, LeaderCast.com. Um, it's an annual leadership development event that's simulcast on the web um, worldwide every year. And you can usually participate in your community for about $50 and hear people like Andy Stanley and John Maxwell and people like that speak about leadership. And so we went to LeaderCast for the first time in our community and thought, wow, we need to do something like that. So we posted several LeaderCast events, um, which we call Leadership Live, um, focusing on how 4-H has made an impact on youth leadership. We focused on women in leadership. And then we focused on one where our director um, spoke. He was new to our organization in Texas coming back as our director, and then our new 4-H Foundation director spoke, as well as 4-H members. So I'll explain a little bit about how we took the tweet ups one step further into Leadership Live. And so basically what we did is have speakers, similar to how things are simulcast on the web right now, streaming on the web, or this morning with our keynote, but they spoke about um, leadership topics, and then we hosted a tweet up in conjunction with that to where the, we could tweet out the, the highlights of what the speakers were saying about leadership. Youth and volunteers could tweet what they were learning, tweet questions. The speakers would actually address those questions during the live session. So there was interaction between the speakers and the audience at home or groups of youth that were gathered together to, to um, participate in Leadership Live. So basically, this is in a nutshell of how we went about doing it. We you know, identified the topic, like one of them was women in leadership that we did, recruited the speakers, marketed. We did use a local, our campus TV station to do the first couple of them. So in a TV station, we did that. Our speakers learned that it was pretty hard just to speak into a, a camera. And so we, we ended up doing our, a, our most recent one in a, more of a format like this, where we had a live audience. And then we also simulcast it on the web through Ustream. And we were able to still incorporate the Twitter um, and the tweet ups into that. So they each had about 15 to 20, 20 minutes to talk. And then we also followed it up with a panel of 4-H members talking about how their experiences have developed them as leaders. So it has quite a bit of people. You've got to have people managing the camera. You've got to have people, obviously, managing the, the tweets and the Twitter feeds, um, and then also your, your live production as well. And so the great thing about this, though, is that two-way conversation between the speakers and the participants where they can ask questions um, through Twitter and, um, and stuff like that. So that's good. Here's a couple of pictures just to give you an idea. This is when they were talking into the camera. Um, backstage, kind of everybody working on Twitter there. And then one of our panels of our very first Leadership Live, just to give you an example of how that looks. But what we saw is that for our very first one, you can see we had 160 unique IP addresses. The one we recently held in December, 375. Most participated from home. Others, they participated in a group setting. Our county extension offices pulled together a group to talk about them. People from multiple states and even Canada participated. Um, and then also we sent out a questionnaire. So what did you learn? How did you, you know, how do you think this impacted you? So you can kind of see how they rated their knowledge of different leadership traits based upon what they, um, based upon their experience in Leadership Live. And just the mere cost of it, you can see that obviously we had to pay for some broadcasting facilities and things like that through our three different Leadership Live sessions we've had. But if you look at the price per contact through the, IP, the number of IP addresses or the cost per contact through Twitter, that it was a very cost productive um, leadership development program that we were able to offer for our youth and volunteers. Um, and here's a little bit about what they're saying, just that they're able to think about how they're using their leadership skills and the decisions that they make and that people want to feel needed. I won't read all those to you, and it gave them new insights into what we're doing to work with young people. 
And if you want to tweet one last time, you can ask, uh, you can answer the question, what did you learn today? Or maybe something that you'll do as a result of this session using that hashtag. And I'm out of time. <laughs> so I'll take questions. And I have business cards, too, if you are interested in learning more about this than the Fast and Furious version that just took place. I'll be happy to share that with you. Yes, ma'am. Um, sure, how I came up with the cost, yeah, I may have passed it already. Oh, okay, so what we did is um, we took the, for our most recent, this is based upon the most recent leadership live we did, which was in December, and so we had 375 unique IP addresses that um, were, that accessed the event online, and then we also, for that one, we also had a live audience similar to this. So we had 60 people in the live audience. We just recruited local youth and volunteers to come. And so <laughs> based upon our expenses, like rental of the facility, renting the media box, you know, having our communications department there with their cameras and stuff like that, what we spent divided by that, four, is it 435, 435 gave us the um, $2.63 per person. The 60 people in the room plus the 375 IP addresses that accessed the event live. We did not. That's underneath the cost per contact for Twitter. Because that's, yeah, that, that was just looking at what we spent. And if we divided it by the 8,400 Twitter reaches, then that's where we got the 14 cents. So other questions? <laughs> um, well, you know, I'll, I'll, in closing then, if I can say, as our first time we did it, we didn't know if it was going to work. We were nervous, you know, we, luckily we had a local broadcasting company that could help, or a communications department this last time, that could worry about all the technical stuff, but seeing the impact that it makes on youth um, is what was important to us, that they were actually learning more about leadership and getting other perspectives on that. And so I would say if you're interested in something like that, give it a try or start with a tweet up. Like I said, that's where we start and we said, okay, let's take this one step further. It's worth it. And the tweet ups are fun. So. Yes, we are. Um, we had, like I said, we just finished one. We did one in February on 4-H doing public speaking presentations. And then we're hopefully going to be doing one or two as we lead up to some of our summer events, like our 4-H Roundup, which is our big statewide achievement event, as well as our Texas 4-H Congress, which is a mock legislative event. And so we can get on and talk about the legislative process and help those youth prepare to come to that event. So those are our plans. Oh, yes, ma'am. For the tweet ups, you don't have to do anything special on Twitter, which is what your question was. Um, we just say that it's at this time at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night and advertise that hashtag join us. All I need to have is a Twitter account. That's all you have to do. So we'll have someone logged in as Texas 4-H, and then we're all logged in on our personal accounts as well. And, but you don't have to do any kind of special setup. Thank you. <laughs>